This is not a very conclusive video, but it only shows the principles. We have here a coil made from telephone wire, plastic isolated, and here we have a capacitor from a 56 picofarad that bridges that coil. And I've tested it with my test oscillator. It was uh, on YouTube, so I don't publish it again. And I found that it did not want to oscillate. And the reason is that this coil with this capacitor here has um, a too high uh, frequency. I don't know where it uh, will oscillate, this tank circuit. I think uh, between 50 MHz and approximately 100 MHz. So that's quite high. But when we stick here into that coil, a ferrite rod, um, the inductance uh, goes up very, very high and it oscillates. So I want to do that now. First I'm going to connect this coil to the oscillator, put down the camera. And you will see, I put, I click the crocodile clips. This is the coil now, connected to the oscillator. Working on 12 volt, approximately no oscillation at all. And I stick the uh, ferrite rod now into this core, sorry, into this coil that I've done now. And we have here now the ferrite rod with the copper wiring, the parallel capacitor. Here we have another parallel capacitor to the tank circuit here. Also 56 picofarad. And when we now align the oscillator to a proper working point, we are going to see that the oscillator works. So it works here. I now change the working point that is in fact the base potentiometer. I now change the value from the emitter potentiometer somewhat and it oscillates. And of course you can derive from the frequency that we read at the output from the oscillator, also on the screen from the scope, uh, uh, combined with the parallel capacitor. There is a formula that I published in an earlier video on which frequency this oscillates. Of course I can connect my frequency counter, but this is only a proof of principle uh, video. So um, what I want to tell with this video is that you cannot always get all coils into oscillation. And uh, the better coils with a better uh, quality factor will start to oscillate much uh, earlier, much easier. Put down the camera again, take out the ferrite rod, it's here now. Here we have that coil again and now we have no oscillation at all. And with a dip meter uh, perhaps you can find out the uh, resonance from this combination. But it's also very important to tell so when you have here a tank circuit consisting of a cap and a coil, it 
this is not very clear, sorry. This is the connection here to the to the coil. It's also very important to which circuit the whole uh, LC combination is connected. So when it has a high impedance here, say 1 mega ohm or 10 mega ohm, like the grid from a tube or the gate from a field effect transistor, the resonant frequency will uh, stay, will be constant, will be properly. But when you have here, for instance, uh, a circuit that damps the coil, for instance, when there's here, in fact, a capacitor that could be, that there's a capacitor here, or here is a resistor. Uh, uh, for instance, the resistance that is uh, there, when you use, for instance, an Im a grounded emitter circuit, it has a low input resistance. Of course, we use here a capacitor to separate the, the, the AC from the DC, etc., etc. But the impedance here. And impedance is a complex resistance consisting of uh, capacitive elements, <coughs> uh, inductive elements, resistive elements. That that are the properties from um, uh, that resistance, impedance, complex resistance. Uh, the coil will be damped and will can go out of its resonance frequency and even the quality factor from such a coil can uh, go down to zero. And that's not what, what we want. So when you want to connect a coil to a radio circuit, it's a very good idea to use a field effect transistor. For instance an NPN an NFET, not NPN, but an NFET. Connect the coil, the tank circuit, to the gate. Uh, because of the, of the extreme high input impedance from such an NFET, the coil is not damped and it keeps its resonance frequency properly. So some advices when you want to work with coils, um, take in account that a coil never um, is used in a vacuum. There's always a signal entering here into a coil, for instance from the antenna, from another circuit, that damps the, the input from the coil and at the same time the output from the coil is also damped by the amplifier stage that's often present after that coil.